is the things you look for in a dingo is when you pick up a pup, particularly a pup. Oh, this Brindabella Brinda one? You pick up a pup mm -hmm. and they just collapse. Normally, this one's wriggling because it's, it's there it is. They just collapse fairly loose. So they're happy to relax on their backs? They're quite happy to relax on their backs where a dog will be stiff as a board. Sit still. Come on, sit still. She is showing the brindle of the Staffordshire Terrier, mm -hmm. which is not a dingo colour except in the area of the Brindabella Ranges around the back of Canberra where there are a hell of a lot of Brindabella brindles. The, uh, the coat is fairly woolly in the pup version. In the adult it is extremely dense but very short. Um, it's only about two centimetres long at the most. So how old are these ones? These are nine weeks old. They're uh, eating dog food, drinking water. They'll chase mum if she stands still, but uh, she's industriously weaning them at the moment. Oh, shut up and behave yourself. Of course, and one of them are howling because they like to howl. They're not howling at the moment. They like, to, the they like to howl instead of bark. Dogs don't, dingoes don't bark. Dingo crosses may bark, but both dingo crosses and dingoes will howl. You're a flat dog and you're a noisy <laughs> dog too. <laughs> nut, aren't you? You're a nut. You so are. you want to show us the dingo, the dingo, nut. dingo pups ears as well? Dingo pups ears or crossbreed pups, not so much. Dingo pups, if they don't stand up pricked by six weeks old, you start to suspect how pure they are. And by six weeks old, their pups, their ears should be pricked, and the animals should be quite alert. They should be starting to run round, and I mean run, not waddle. Um, they should be starting to eat dry food, which they'll crunch. Um, dingoes tend to masticate everything rather than swallow it, uh, which means that they can get away with eating chicken bones and things like that, which is not something you get with dogs. Um, they're um, uh, Some of the, the classic things you use as dingo markers are they're, when the, uh, an adult stands, their rear stifles are almost vertical. Now in Canine circles, dogs with vertical stifles have no endurance in moving. Um, unfortunately, dingoes never read this, so they don't know that, so they don't give a damn about it and just keep going. They have, uh, most common movement is a, a paddle. Yes, mum's outside and you're inside. I'm complaining. <laughs> and you want to show us their ears as well? If you grab one. And... Where's an ear? The, the ears, once they're adults, the ears are very stiff and quite leathery. Quite unlike a dog's ear, which is quite soft. Who's there? Where are you all? They're down here. Oh. Down, down here. here. I've got two under them. One of these. Down here. So they've got rounded tips on their ears, haven't they? <laughs> The, the tips of the ears are round. Come here, you. Come out of there. Come on. I'll extract one. <laughs> yeah, you'll do. You'll do. Let's have a look. The tip of the ear is rounded. Not sharp pointed like so many Kelpies and similar breeds. The ear is, even at this age, is starting to get fairly thick. It's not yet leathery but it will be when it gets a bit more age on it. Absolutely couldn't give a damn about anything. 
flip it upside down and there it is upside down backwards so what typical dingo you always have a white tip on the tail not necessarily a big tip but usually more than five hairs and less than two and a half inches if the white tip is over two and a half inches you once again you suspect the crossbreeding and their feet the feet are large very large for the dog they grow into their feet their feet don't grow with them you can see they're a fairly big foot now when you feel the main pads on the dingo the pad is omnidirectional you feel the pad on a dog it has a forward direction and a backward direction a hard grip in one way and no grip in the other way on a dingo it has no grip either way it's uh, omnidirectional you're a villain aren't you so how close are these to being purebred dingoes as close these as people can get officially three quarters hmm. um, they're not purebred but they've got most of the characteristics and when you shine the lights in their eyes at night time you get bright blue hmm. you don't get uh, you don't get black don't get the green to get with so many dog breeds what are you putting on such a ding back noise over so when you're looking at the DNA when you're looking at the DNA for the Conservation Society and um, are they dogs? They are not dogs. No dog carries the, the markers that the dingo carries. So they're not dogs? Mm -hmm. They're not dogs. Um, this one is the one that thinks he's a dog. Notice the feet straight up in the air, spread, mm -hmm. paws, everything else. You're absolutely sure you're a dog, aren't you? So this one's not as comfortable on the back, huh? Oh, no. <laughs> this is a dog, see? Okay. <laughs> I'm surprised it's not wriggling trying to set up. It's not wriggling because it's been picked up that many times. It, it hasn't got over the... It's got over the wriggling stage, but it hasn't got over the I am a dog stage. Sure. Here. Out you go. Oh, out the mum. Okay. This yeah, which one's this? This is the dog called Tripod. She's definitely not a, a purebred dingo. You can see it because she's carrying an, a, a brindled coat. However, she has got the white paws of a dingo. The socks are excessive in height in that they go past her wrist. Mm -hmm. In a dingo, they should not go more than 60, 60 millimeters from the front. And... Uh, as you can see, she thinks she's a dingo because she's completely and utterly relaxed, couldn't give a damn about anything. Demonstrable white tail tip, which is dingo. And uh, prick ears. And her brindle coat, but her mother has a brindle coat. Um, her mother has a brindle coat, which once again comes from the staffy in her grandmother. Right. And the staffy is a very strong gene. And to give you an idea of how strong a gene can be, um, back to dingoes, the Brindabella colour you said, of course, that comes from her grandmother. It comes from her grandmother on this one. But yeah. um, what about the Brindabella Rangers dogs? Brindabella Rangers dogs, which was above the above the uh, properties in the old Canberra station, the dingoes around there were hybridised probably a hundred years ago. The only thing we can think of is that it was a Staffy Terrier got in there somewhere because nothing else carried the same markings apart from a Staffy Terrier and this has very heavily influenced the local um, hybrid hmm. dingo. So It's part dingo, part Staffy because it still carries the Staffy colours which you can see on this right. girl. And so hence although it's common in the Brindabella range it's not the dingo colour it's not a no. dingo colour and it doesn't exist anywhere other than in that general area. So they can leave home at six weeks, no worries. Mm -hmm. um, and they need a lot of socialisation. You can see we're um, 
Stripes missed out on the socialisation. These guys are still still quite social. And dingoes as pets? Um, provided you've got good fences, and you remember they are still hunters. <laughs> they're very clever dogs. Uh, they're reasonably clever. And adventurous. And adventurous. Watch this one. This, this one's going to be worth taking. They're very agile dingoes, aren't they? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And quick? Yeah. Quick. They are reasonably quick. What they call a tricolour kelpie. <laughs>